Hey everyone, welcome to ONTAP. My name's Chris, and today we will be talking about the world-renowned Dutch beer, Heineken. Let's get started. Heineken was founded in 1864 by Herat Adrian Heineken. Dutch viewers, please feel free to correct my pronunciation on that. It seems that Heineken came from a bit of family wealth. All right, so basically what happened was he asked his mom if she could buy him a brewery, and she said yes. Must be nice. While Heineken started the brewery, he didn't have success for the first few years. That is, until he brought on Dr. Hartog Elion in 1873, who had been a student of Louis Pasteur. And for those of us who don't remember from Trivia Night or whatever, Louis Pasteur was a French chemist and biologist who made major advancements in the fields of vaccination and pasteurization, named after him. Pasteurization being a process whereby milk and dairy products in general are treated, usually with heat, to eliminate harmful bacteria, making them more safe for human consumption. In 1873, Dr. Elion developed a new strain of bottom fermenting yeast, which Mr. Heineken used to produce a new lager beer. And this is the same lager beer that we think of today as the characteristic Heineken. The recipe has remained unchanged ever since the 1870s. Mr. Heineken's lager quickly became very popular, winning awards throughout France and the Netherlands. And eventually, by the end of the 1800s, Heineken was the largest beer imported into France by volume. One interesting point, actually, is that while today we think of a beer like Heineken as being this really, really generic, typical beer, carbonated, sort of malty, yellowish, clear gold lager, that wasn't actually always the case and for most of human history, beer was um, rather different, more similar to what we think of today like ales. And this style of beer, this bottom fermenting lager beer, was initially produced by the Czechs and the Germans, but didn't really catch on until about the mid 1800s, mid to late 1800s in Europe. And it seems that Heineken was able to ride this trend of increasing popularity of lager beer. Heineken was able to expand operations and grow the beer and the brewery in size by a very, very large factor. The company was also helped on by the fact that it had really three generations of very smart, business-savvy family members. Kind of like those medieval and early modern European dynasties where you've got like the king, the son, and the grandson, and they're all really good at running the kingdom right before the really inept family members take over and run the nation straight into the ground. Originally, Heineken was running the brewery till 1917, and he died, and his son, Henri Pierre Heineken, I'm assuming it's French, uh, ran the brewery until 1940, where he really expanded operations into the United States. And then his son, Alfred Henri Heineken, was in charge of the brewery and ran it until the late 1980s. And it was really under his watch that Heineken started establishing itself as a major global conglomerate, the one that we think of today. That basically gets us to about the present day. Oh, and also fun fact, in 2018, Maggie Timoney was appointed CEO of Heineken's US operations, making her officially the first female CEO of a major US beer producer. Heineken is both the name of a brand of beer and a company. Heineken, or Heineken International, as it's officially known, is a massive global conglomerate. It's the second largest beer producer on planet Earth. Heineken International owns over 250 different brands of beer. The company produces beer on a massive scale. In 2011, 4.24 billion, billion with a B, liters of Heineken brand beer was produced. That's 23 million barrels. That's a lot of beer. Heineken's also sold in 192 countries around the globe. Given the fact that there are somewhere around 195 to 198 sovereign nations, depending on your particular government's view of places like Kosovo, Taiwan, or Palestine, that basically translates to if you don't live in North Korea, you can buy Heineken beer. And let's be honest, Kim Jong-un probably has a stash of Heineken beer somewhere, maybe next to a spare T-55. Who knows? The company has had a massive advertising footprint as befitting its size as a massive company. Heineken's really figured out that its advertising niche, if you can even call it a niche, is in the space of sports and sportswear. The company partnered with Italian sportswear brand Kappa, but they made major progress by being a sponsor of UEFA Champions League for the last 26 years. And more recently, they became the official sponsor of Major League Soccer, which, for those of you who don't know, which included myself until I had to look it up, Major League Soccer is basically the men's equivalent of professional soccer in the United States. And just because I live in the United States, I will be referring to this sport as soccer, but I am fully aware that the vast majority of humans on planet Earth refer to it as 
football. Heineken also partnered with the James Bond franchise in 1997. Because let's be honest, what better way to market your brand as cool, urbane, and vaguely European, depending on your opinion of Britain in relation to the rest of the European continent, touchy subject, I know, than to put your product in a movie alongside the likes of Aston Martin. And I also want to mention quickly that in 2013, Heineken did join with a bunch of other beer companies to start a campaign against harmful drinking. And even today, if you go on the Heineken website and type in best way to drink Heineken, you will be presented with a list of helpful tips on how to reduce harmful drinking, which I appreciate. The main flagship beer produced by Heineken is, well, Heineken Lager. This is the beer known the world over that comes in characteristic green bottles with little red stars on the front. When I was a kid, I just assumed that had something to do with the Soviet Union, but apparently it's just a coincidence. This is the standard Heineken Lager that's going to be a pretty inoffensive beer, with some good carbonation and a very slight bitter grain-based beer flavor. Heineken also produces Heineken Light. This is going to be a light beer with fewer calories, lower alcohol content. Heineken Zero. Heineken rolled this out in 2017, and it's their first non-alcoholic beer, possibly produced in tandem with their campaign to reduce harmful drinking. There is also another beer out there called Heineken Oud Bluen, which I can only assume means Old Brown in Dutch, and I had never even heard about this beer until I started researching for this video, and it seems there's a good reason for that, because Oud Bluen is only produced in the Netherlands, and I myself live in the United States. That's the history, current events, and flavor profiles of Heineken beer. But now let's get to tasting. So first up, we have the Heineken Light. Yep, looks, looks quite clear. So I would describe this in one word as weak. It's not particularly bad or vile or disgusting. I wouldn't describe it as maybe water, f like that tastes like beer or sort of beer flavored water, but it's not far off. There's really not much body to this at all. And I, I get it's a light beer. I guess the only situation where I would drink this is if I was stuck on a, if I were stuck on a deserted island, and there was no other beer to drink except for this and maybe like Natty Ice or something. Um, I guess I would drink this, and if this was cold. If this was not cold, I would not have this. This would need to be cold. So next up, we have Heineken Zero. I gotta say, I'm actually very excited to try this. This is the first non-alcoholic beer I've actually ever had. So I have no idea what this is gonna taste like, but I'm kind of curious. All right, so let's give it a pour. Heineken Zero, non-alcoholic beer. It looks almost exactly like the light beer. It doesn't smell like anything. It, it has like no smell. All right, let me take a look. Huh. So that's, that's interesting really. I. I don't know what I was expecting with this. Like, I don't know what non-alcoholic beer was gonna taste like, but I'm gonna go out on a limb here and say, I think this tastes marginally better than the light beer, actually. Now, this doesn't taste like much, but I think the difference is it has a little bit more body to it than the light beer. This at least has a little bit more of that feeling in your palate of beer. It just it doesn't have really any flavor. It's, it's sort of like the sensation of drinking beer with none of the flavor of beer. So last but not least, we have the classic Heineken. Pour it out and, yeah, you know, it's got a slightly, slightly deeper color than these other two. Unsurprising given the fact that it's real, real beer. It still doesn't smell like much. So, all right, take a taste. Okay, so here's kind of how I describe Heineken. So I've got a friend, uh, one, of my, one, of my, one of my best friends. Um, she's really not a, not a beer drinker, but if we, if we go out, we're hanging out and we go out for a couple beers and 
uh, I order her something, it doesn't matter what she's drinking. I mean, it, it could literally be like a lager, a stout, a porter, an IPA. I mean, honestly, I don't, I don't know like how she does it. But whatever, whatever beer um, we drink, she will have a taste of it. And when I ask her, what does it taste like? She'll say, it tastes like beer. And that is exactly how I would describe this. It tastes like beer. When you think of beer as a reasonably non-offensive, 5%, somewhat carbonated, vaguely grain-based alcoholic beverage, that's what this tastes like. Point that I should mention is that Heineken from the keg tastes way better than Heineken from the bottle. I know, right? Tell us something we don't know. No, 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 but seriously. So I was actually able to do a taste test of that. This was a couple of years back when I was in Riverdale in New York, and I actually got to try Heineken in the bottle and Heineken in the keg. And from the keg, it tastes way better because Heineken in the bottle, it described as it has sometimes a skunky flavor, like it gets skunked and it doesn't taste particularly good. And for those of you who have had Heineken in the bottle, especially if it's maybe skunked a little bit, you kind of know what I'm talking about. So hopefully maybe one of these days, as the world is slowly moving out of uh, COVID lockdown mode, it might be possible for me down the road to go to bars and actually try some of these in the bottle versus in the keg. Because right now the title on tap is more of a metaphorical title rather than like a literal title, but uh, perhaps down the road that will not be the case. So, yep, it tastes like beer. So between the three, it should really come as no surprise that the classic Heineken is number one. To recap, in third place, we have Heineken Light. If I were stuck on a deserted island and there was absolutely no other beer to drink and this was cold, I guess I would have this. In any other situation, no. This one, for whatever strange reason, is kind of better than a Heineken Light and it gives the sensation of drinking beer without any of the flavor of it, which I think the sensation is a little bit better than at least the, the watery sense of this. And then of course, in first place, we have the Heineken Original. You know, the Heineken Original, while it's not exactly the most groundbreaking beer in the world in terms of the different flavors you might have, it is very important in, in a lot of different ways. As one reviewer on Beer HQ put it, I believe, they, he said, Heineken is like the Coke or the McDonald's of beer. You always know what you're gonna get with a Heineken. And I think that's absolutely true. That's exactly how I view it. If I'm out somewhere and there's really sort of nothing else available, Heineken is sort of in that first tier of beer that I will be fine with drinking and I won't sort of turn my nose up at it. If you know, they're all, the only other options are kind of like really low grade light beers and things like that, I'm okay drinking a Heineken. Obviously, if there are other options available, I'm gonna go with that. Let me know what you think in the comments, if this is an okay assessment or if you think I'm sort of totally off the mark. But um, yeah, at the end of the day, Heineken, it's a classic beer, it's known the world over, and there's really a good reason, I think, for why it is so well known, because it is just a global brand, you know what you're gonna get, it's not gonna be a surprise, and frankly, it tastes like beer. Thanks so much for watching everyone. If you're feeling adventurous, why not hit that like and subscribe button so you can get more on tap content in the coming weeks. I'll see you next time.